When you start your online business, there's always one question that comes around time and time again. You get the golden question. The golden question is, what do you do all day? <laughs> right? It could be from your friends. It could be from your families. You know, they know you're making money, but what do you do? You know, that's a question that I get a lot. And I start thinking about it. And then it's, when they ask me that, it's kind of hard to tell them exactly what I do because they're not going to understand what I do all day. But you listeners will exactly understand what we're talking about. So welcome, guys, to another episode of the Evolve Marketing Podcast. I am here with my co-host, Brian Brewer. How are you, brother? I'm doing well. How are you today, Andre? Everything's great so far. Um, getting ready for spring break. We have a vacation planned this weekend. And then we're actually going to LA next weekend for uh, the actual spring break for uh, my mother-in-law's birthday. So we're going to be there with the family. It's going to be great. You're going to be busy, busy. And yeah, you're going down to Big Bend National Park uh, this weekend, which is exciting down there in South Texas. I guess it's right on the right on the Rio Grande down there. At least part of it is, huh? Yep, it's right next to Mexico, basically. The Rio yeah. Grande is right there, the border. Uh, I think you can actually cross the border uh, through the river and go to Mexico because there's like a little town right there where you can go and eat authentic Mexican food. And you're literally outside the country, you get me? So it's kind of cool. We're, we're excited for that trip. That sounds good. What do you do? Take your shoes off, hold them above your head and cross th through the river and then, then you're good to go, huh? It's, yeah, because the river, yeah, it's a big river, but it's, at this point, it's like a creek now. You get me? Like, yeah. it's not like full on, like that Colorado River going down. Yet, you know, like, it's not like that. <laughs> so nice and easy. You can get, get the kid through it and all that good stuff and be safe and sound, hopefully. <laughs> not get yeah. washed away. Yeah, so um, that's exciting. Uh, super excited for you. Um, hopefully, the weather's great. It's a good time of year to go down there. We were talking about how you're going to be down there during the new moon cycle. So the sky should be nice and dark. So hopefully, you'll see plenty of stars and uh, have a great time, I'm sure. But yeah, that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. What do you do all day, right? <laughs> um, one of my uh, coaching students asked me that. He's like, you know, I'd really like a daily action plan. Or, you know, what, what do you do first? What's the important tasks? And you know, what, what goes on, you know, that way you can get a clear plan. And I think that's what we're going to talk about. So I think we're going to start talking about what you do in the beginning kind of versus what we do nowadays. But, but before we jump into it, you know, what do we do all day? Because you see those posts on TikTok, and it's like, here's how I make a thousand dollars a day in 15 minutes worth of work. And there's always the skepticism, like, well, is that true? That's got to be false. And then you get the people who come and say, it actually takes three hours a day, and we're just going to kind of try to shed some light on it and give some actual answers here today. Yeah, and it's true to what I told you earlier. Like, you know, I don't know what to uh, what to answer <laughs> when people ask me, "What do you do all day?" You know, because yeah, I, I can tell, I can go the easy route of yeah, I make videos, seven second videos, and I post them on social media, or I can go the hard route where I tell them step by step everything that I do and everything that they're not going to understand which is going to prolong the conversation, which is just going to attract more confusion. So it's always like, oh, should I tell them what I'm doing or, or should I tell them what I do? It's almost like you're doing something illegal, illegal, but you're not. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, when I get those questions, a lot of times I just say stuff like, oh, you know, I sell stuff on the Internet. And then they go a little bit, you know, sometimes that's it. They're like, oh, cool. And then sometimes they go a little bit deeper. And then what do you sell? Well, digital products and coaching. What what do you what what and then they get deeper and deeper. I'm like, all right, here we go. This is gonna be a this is gonna be an hour long <laughs> conversation now. But if someone takes interest, which is rare, I, I'll dive into it a little bit further. But yeah, you know, back to the back to the thing you see on social media. You know, some people saying it takes three hours. Some people saying it takes fifteen minutes. What's the real answer? Well, in shortest terms, simplest terms, it really depends. And I think that's what we're going to dive into because there have been times of my journey, especially when I was 100% affiliate marketing where I'd literally work like 15 minutes a day, maybe four days a week, the max, you know, and, it, and that would sustain for a period of months sometimes. But then there's also times of your journey where it feels like you're burning the candle at both ends, you know, especially if you're just getting started and you have a full-time job. It's like you're devoting all these hours. And when we're talking about affiliate marketing, there is a lot more work in the beginning, right? When you're first getting started, there there's a lot to do beyond just learning what to do, right? Yeah, 100%. So in the beginning, you're going to have your schedule, right? It's not like you're doing this full-time full from the get-go. That's not how it works. 
Um, you're gonna have your schedule. So in the beginning, it's really good to organize yourself, organize your schedule, um, time management, like for yourself. You get me? That's super important because nobody's telling you what to do in your business, but yes, with your regular schedule, right? So that's the first thing that you have to look. You know, what? How can I manage my time if efficiently, and in order for you to progress, you know, because you can do it a lot of hours. You can spend a lot of hours in your business and not get nothing done. So you gotta be strategic about what you what you do. But yeah, in the beginning, it's gonna take more time, right? Because you have to go through the learning curve, right? So the the thing that you said that it was simple in the beginning is because you have to be in charge of your own time. That's the main yeah. thing, right? So if you're not, then you're not gonna go forward. You're not gonna um, keep progressing, like I'm saying, to get better. Yeah, in the beginning, you know, you're not. This is entrepreneurship. You're not going to have a boss cracking the whip. And in the beginning, you're not making any money yet. I mean, that's just a fact. So there's, it's not like if you don't work for one day, you lose out on anything other than potential future earnings. So you really have to hold your own feet to the fire, so to speak. One of the things that really worked out well for me when you're speaking of time management in the beginning, you know, I was busy. I was working in the restaurant industry. I'd work three three p.m. to sometimes one a.m. Usually six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. So I found a time that would work for me consistently. For me, it was noon to one. That was my side hustle time. And I did that Monday through Saturday. I took Sunday off to give myself a day to, day to rest, a day to relax and not think about it. And that's what it was. It was like, okay, it's noon. Time for me to hop on the computer. And in the beginning, you know, it's, it's a lot of creating systems, right? Whether you're building your funnel, you're opening your social media accounts, you know, you're, you're planning, you're learning, you're doing all these things. You're setting up your e automated email campaigns. And so it takes time. So does it take how long? Well, it depends. If you have an hour a day to commit to it, then it's going to take maybe a couple weeks. If you have six hours a day to commit to it, you might be able to knock it out in the first week. It just depends. But you know that that is the hard part of getting started. Yeah, it, it completely depends on your learning abilities too. You know, so some people learn faster. Some people learn take a little a little long time. Some people understand something, but then they have to redo it more than one time so they can get better at it. Right. So depending on your learning abilities. Um, but yeah, so in the beginning, you know, the first thing is learning, right? Learning what you're supposed to be doing. Talk about the funnels, everything else, right? So what do you, what what did you do as a beginner, right? First, you start in the computer. You say you had a time frame from twelve to one, about an hour a day, right? To start learning, right? So what I'm gonna say, what a month, maybe two weeks of learning, of getting. Yeah, I mean, right? You know, it was one of those things where when I started, you remember this is many, many, many years ago you know, cause I'm old, but when I started, it was, it was product review blogs. So it would be, okay, how do I, how do I buy a domain name? And that takes literally, I mean, it takes an hour cause you got to research it. Then you got to do it. Then you got to choose it. So that's a whole day right there, but I'm okay with that at this point, you know, cause I know I'm looking towards the future. And then once you get the domain name, it's like, okay, what about hosting? What is hosting? You know what I mean? So you, you learn all this stuff and then you find what hosting provider you want to use and you get all that set up. It's like, okay, now I need a framework to build this thing on. How do, how do I actually make a page? Oh, okay. I need WordPress. How do I install WordPress? And I install it. Okay, great. Now what do I do? So, you know, at this point, literally I'm four, five, six days into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I'm almost burnt a whole week just getting that part set up. Then... It's like okay, I gotta, I gotta get a theme in here so my what my blog looks good, so it doesn't just look crappy. So, all right, which theme do I want to buy? Okay, how do I import it? How do I customize it? How do I make changes to the menu and st stuff like that? How do I optimize it for SEO? So now I'm two weeks into it now, and I haven't even done anything yet. You know what I mean? But that's kind of the nature of getting started. Now, luckily these days, funnels are much easier than websites. You know, most funnel building software are drag and drop. And they have hosting built into them. So it's it's gotten a lot easier over the years. Uh, but still, you're going to run into some of those same things. How do I do this one little thing? Okay, now how do I do it? And it takes time. Okay, so let's call it level one, right? Level one, when you first started, let's call it the research bubble, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have to learn and research and making sure everything's working right. So once you get past the research bubble... You know, now you have your business, right? You have your business, you're ready to launch, you're ready to start creating content. When all of that is out of the way, you know, what do you do, right? Like, what, what do you do every single day? Let's say your business is working, right? It's running correctly and you wake up today, you know? Not today, no, not today, today, you know, as, as, still as a beginner. Then we're right. going to go to, we're going to move to our, what we do nowadays. But 
back then? What what is it that you used to do when you wake up? Yeah, so it's important to remember that when you're launching your first funnel, you want to learn the the frameworks that work. You know, you don't just want to put a bunch of words up on the on the website and expect it to make money. You want to learn the frameworks that work. You want to learn, you know, where you need a, a video that that preframes the offer. You want to learn what sort of things you should say when you welcome to them to the to the website, but still launch your minimum viable funnel. Like don't stress about it for months about making it perfect and choosing button colors and stuff like just make sure you followed a basic framework that's been proven to work and get it launched because as you go through time, you're going to test, tweak, change, optimize all those things. But after it's launched, before you start creating content, we almost skipped a step, test your funnel, right? Yeah. So that's important. Uh, testing your funnel. I used to do that every single day because I was using a free software, right? So when I use a, a free software, it doesn't run smoothly. Every single day, there was a new problem. So just like the, the beginner mindset, I used to wake up and literally go on my funnel and opt into my own funnel. So that's what I used to do. Like that's one of the steps that I needed to do every single morning to make sure my business was running just because I didn't have the money to invest on the software that will eliminate those little problems you get me. But that was one of the things that I would do every morning. Check right. if my, my funnel was working. <laughs> Make sure the business hasn't burned down to the ground while you're asleep. And so that's good. It's those intention, uh, attention to detail uh, that lead to success because we've seen people send traffic and get a video go viral to a funnel that's not working or has exactly. the wrong affiliate link in there or has a broken link or page one doesn't link to page two or the email when it gets entered, it doesn't go into the email sequence. Like all those things can happen. So definitely go through your funnel and test it. Now, back to your question originally. Now you're set up. You got your minimum viable funnel. Everything works as it should. You, the tracking's working for your affiliate link. What do you do? So when you're just getting started, now it's content, you know, because you're not going to know if your system's optimized until you start sending traffic. You're not going to know if anybody's going to buy from your funnel until you start sending traffic. You're not going to know if you're going to get traffic until you start creating videos. So in the next step is just start creating content and focus on getting better at it, right? Um, honing in on your story, thinking about what buzzwords you might want to use in hooks. Think about your messaging and just practice and, and try to get a little bit of momentum going. But more importantly, just try to get in the habit of creating content. Exactly. So that's what that's. Let's call that the, the second level, you know, the creating content. But just keep in mind that just because you pass the research bubble, you still have to keep the bubble going. It doesn't mean that you stop the research, right? Because then you're going to start working on the uh, analytics for your videos, the algorithms. Now you're going to learn a different side of the business that you had no idea that you had to learn. But everything is a learning process and you kind of learn as you go anyways. Um, so yeah, for me too, my level two was creating content, right? I would wake up, <clears throat> check my funnel was working. I would start creating content because you're right. In the beginning, you're not going to know if something works if you don't have the traffic, if you don't have the eyes on your product that you're promoting on your business. So creating content was something that I focused a lot when I first started as a, as a beginner. Literally, I already knew that my website, everything was working. My emails, my campaign was working. Now my focus is traffic. Every single day, I will wake up with the traffic mentality. Okay, I need traffic, I need traffic, I need traffic, I need traffic. And wh what do you do with that? You create that content, you attract people to your system, and then you start learning new abilities like Instagram stories, going live, right? So you keep going with the research side of it because even though you're creating content every single day, you're still learning new things throughout the day on the app. Because, yeah, you're scrolling, you're looking at ideas, what to make, and you're learning. You're learning just by being on the on the app. You're, you're basically doing research on your own without even realizing it. Oh, this yeah, person but... is doing something great. Let me just try to see if I can do that too. No, this video works for you. Let me see if that video works for me. And then little by little, you start learning and learning and learning more. Absolutely. And it's just kind of like being in a room full of successful people. It just kind of seeps in a little bit. Same thing uh, with creating content. You know, it, it it goes and the more you consume strategically, not just mindless scrolling, but strategically, the more you learn. 
Now, let, let me pose this question for you. Now we're in the beginning stages where we're creating content. There's four main platforms, I would say. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Those seem to be the four biggest platforms that, that see success. I know Pinterest is out there, and there's threads and all that stuff, and there's Twitter, and there's LinkedIn and stuff like that. But I've never really messed around with those other things too much. So we'll just, we'll just talk about the four main, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. In the beginning... You have the opportunity to either A, extend your reach across all platforms, or B, focus in on one platform and try to manage or master it, I guess I should say. What do you think is the most effective strategy there for the beginner, Andre? Uh, for the beginning, is focus on one platform. I think that's more effective uh, because the only reason is because as a beginner, you tend to get overwhelmed easily. And once you tend to get overwhelmed, you get frustrated. Once you get frustrated, then you quit. You get me? So that happens a lot. So I will focus on one platform, but it doesn't mean and eventually you have to branch out. You get me? In the beginning, yeah, focus on one platform because you need to get better. You need to get better at those skills. But then after a while, when you're comfortable, when you're ready with those skills, you feel at ease, you know, okay, yeah, I can do this every single day. Then add another step into your system, which is yeah. posting different platforms after that. 100% agree, because while they're all very similar in the sense that a lot of times the same hooks works, the same stories work, the same messaging works, they they all have different nuances and content per, tend to perform, I would say slightly different content tends to perform better on each platform. You kind of, you know, you, while you can just re, repost and cross post, I think that the effectiveness of that strategy is not working as much as it used to a couple of years ago. Now it's like there's certain nuances. So I agree. Focus in on what platform and try to master it. That's really the, the the next step of creating content is trying to master content. Because what I see happen a lot of times is people will post and post and post and maybe they're doing one platform, maybe they're doing a bunch of platforms, but they post and post and post it and they're like, it's been three months and I'm not getting results. I have 400 followers on TikTok. Every video gets two to 300 views and I'm not just just not generating leads. And if you get find yourself in that situation, understand it takes time to get good, but it doesn't take time to get good results. And what I mean by that is if you're doing the right things and your messaging is dialed in, your delivery and your setting and all that stuff is perfect on your content for you, there is no one perfect, but it's perfect for you, you will get results very quickly. So don't just post and post and post the same old stuff and just wait, right? Test, try new things, learn, exactly. implement, model. And, and and try to get something that gets some get some action, right? Yeah, I'm focused on the message, right? Because if you focus on the message, it's better to focus on the message than on the number. For example, like if you're thinking about, okay, no, I need a, a thousand followers. I need twenty thousand followers to make money. That's not true. You know, you can make good money with little followers. My TikToks never blew up in the past, and I made a lot of money just from my TikTok. You get me? And I have way less followers than a lot of the creators that were doing it. So don't worry about the number. Worry about the messaging. That's really important. Um, so yeah, after I will, I will wake up, focus on traffic. So create content, right? I will create content, at least my three videos every single day. I was, I was religious about it. Like I needed to make my three videos every single day. And I just never stopped that. Um, I, I would do that. And then what happens after you, you post a video, right? You start getting interactions. You start getting engagement. You start getting messages. So then that comes to the next step of what I do all day. I have conversations with people. I talk to them. I hear what they have to say. I hear their pain points. I hear the objections when they don't want to take action. You know, I hear all of this. And in the beginning, I had no idea how to talk to them or anything. I was just going with the flow and then just trying to help, right? I was just trying to help from the beginning. I went back to a conversation a long time ago. It was like a conversation that I had three years ago with somebody on TikTok. And I was just looking to see the way that I was I was speaking to this person and I was just literally just helping them through it through the conversation because you can get I have conversations with other people where they're just trying to sell me something right but then I saw that conversation and I was like wow okay yeah I was actually really trying to help people and then of course making the sale at the end but I was actually trying to help them with conversation just a regular conversation it's not like I was jumping on calls with them or give them tutorials it's just answering the, the questions that they had. 
Yeah, just going back and forth in the DMs or the comments, depending on what platform and what makes sense. And and that's it. I mean, when you break it down, literally the easiest way for a beginner to make high ticket sales as quickly as possible is just to have casual conversations with regular folks. I mean, there you don't need sales strategy. Mm-hmm. You literally just go out and try to help them. And eventually you help them enough where they're just confident in their abilities and they're like, yep, this sounds good. Andre or Brian or whoever, I want to go forward. What's the next step? And that's when you give them affiliate links. I mean, that's just the easiest way. But two things happen when you do that. So that's why I don't know if this is considered phase three yet where you're where you're messaging and, and working on engagement. But two amazing things happen other than potential sales. Actually, let's say three amazing things happen, and I'll get through these really quickly. First, when someone messages you and you help them, that's kind of like a little bit of a dopamine boost. It's the, It yeah. feels good. And that's what keeps you motivated in the beginning because your money's not coming in yet. You're working without results. You're past the exciting part where you bought a course and you're all excited. And you're past the exciting part where you launched your funnel and now you have something live on the internet. You're past the exciting part where you where you made your first post and you were probably scared shitless. Then it's a little bit of a wait wait and work type thing. But yeah, when you help people and they're like, "Oh, thank you, I didn't know that," or "Thank you, thanks for introducing me to this opportunity," that's the dopamine boost or rush that you need to keep going. So that's for the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens is you start to build your community on on social media. It's your ride or dies. It's the people who fall in love with your brand. They watch all your videos. They comment. Sometimes they even answer questions that other people left once they get a little bit more advanced. And those initial community members are how the algorithm decides the other people that should see your video because they can't they can't look at a video, see a hashtag and say, oh, all these people should get it. It's more like, hey, these 20 people all love this content creator and here are their common interests or demographics. So let's find more people who share those common interests or demographics. So that's how you seed initial growth. And the third thing that happens is you start to learn objections, concerns, fears, desires, goals, dreams, all of those things, which can help you out later on down the road when you want to fix the messaging on your funnel, uh, write follow-up emails. You can address those at scale long-term. They also create great content for future videos. 100%. And then you said it right. You know, this The whole talking to people, the objections, the conversations, the community, I think that falls down to level two still. You get me? It comes down to the content because it comes it comes with it, right? You 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 post a video, you're gonna get all these problems coming. <laughs> you get me? So it co- it goes well together. Um, so yeah, it takes a lot of time. In the beginning, it takes a lot of time. I know you want to start this business. I know your focus is passive income. I know your focus is spend less time uh, somewhere else and be home with your family. I know your your goal is to make more money. Your goal is to go on vacation. Your goal, your goal is to have time freedom. But at first, you need to put in the hours. You need to put in the work. You need to learn the skills. And that takes time. That takes time, you know? Eventually, when you get to the point where me and Brian are, you will have that time freedom, right? Because we're not there eight hours a day working on our business anymore. You know, it is literally maybe three hours, four hours. You get me? That's it. You know, even less some days too. Even some days we don't even look at it, you know? So it happens, right? But in the beginning, you need to put in the time. You need to put in the money. No money, I guess. More time than anything else, right? Because you need to learn all those skills. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, there's the old saying, like, put in what you have. So you either have time or money to put into it. But I don't recommend people putting money into it in the beginning, other than maybe some education and some basic yeah. software. Because if you decide, like, oh, I don't have time, so I'm just going to start affiliate marketing and run ads because I have more money than time, you're not going to make any money because you don't have the messaging. You don't have the proper systems. You don't have optimized funnels. You don't know anything yet, right? You don't know how to create good creatives, which is content. You know what I mean? So yeah, in the beginning, it really is. It really is time. Mm-hmm. So now, what's the next step, right? I, th- I guess what well, what what are the other things that I used to do as a beginner, right? The the last thing, level three, I guess you can say, is keep learning, right? right. Keep learning new things. Um, just because I have everything running, that my business running, doesn't mean that okay, I'm done. I'm just gonna do everything, stay comfortable. No, I needed to still get out of my comfort zone and then learn new things. 
um, I invested in new mentors, you know, I invested in new programs. I was actively learning on YouTube, learning on other courses that I bought. So that I never lost it, right? So that's one of the things that I had to keep going. I had to keep learning new things. When I got invited to the mastermind uh, to be a speaker, I felt like I was still a beginner. Right. So what I did, I did and I bought different courses. I bought more mentorship programs just so I can feel better, feel more at ease, I guess, with with everything that I have accomplished. Because everything happened relatively fast. You get me? It took time, but it was it was fast. It was a year, right? Um, but yeah, I, I had to keep learning. So that was my level three. My level three was just keep learning, keep learning from different people, see what I like, see what I didn't like, and then also implement those things that I was learning. Hundred percent, and you know, you talk about the confidence in your ability because once you start making the money, the last thing you want to do is lose it. So you want to be confident about your abilities to to continue on. And yeah, level three, uh, you know, definitely continue to learn. Um, the other thing that I think is very important at level three, and before I, I reveal this, so to speak, um, let's let's just understand that level two is definitely six figure potential. Definitely, hundred percent, right? Um, but then we yeah. want to go on to level three, where we learn, so we make it easier, we make it more repeatable, we make it more sustainable, and then hopefully we can scale beyond that as well. So I think another part of level three, really, after everything's going and you're starting to make money and you've had conversation, is optimization. You know, I see a, a, the big mistake I see beginners make, especially with their their email campaigns is they just figure longer is better. You know, if 20 automated emails is good, then 40 automated emails is better. And then 80 automated emails is four times as good. But I think you can get better results by trying to extract more money out of the current traffic you have at that point than extending the the, the communication cycle with the traffic. What I mean by that is look at your follow-up. Is it optimized? Are you getting as many people as possible to buy something from you? And if the answer is no, then go into the optimi optimization stage. Step one is optimize for your initial product, right? You have some sort of core offer that you're creating content to. So look at your emails, look at your follow-up, look at your funnel. Is there messaging? Is there wording? Could I be better somewhere? Can I change things? Then once you have that to the point where it's good enough, don't optimize yourself to death. But once you're like, oh, this is this is humming along pretty good. 7% of the people buy into the low ticket. 3% of the people buy the high ticket. That's pretty good. Now what can we do? Well, uh, let's start thinking about adding additional streams of income to the back end, right? Don't change your messaging, but think about adding additional streams of income to the back end. Can I get another offer? Can I become an affiliate for a software and get people to purchase that some way? Because... Once you're once you're humming along and doing six figures, you can control what you can control, and you can control the amount of money you get out of your leads a lot easier than you can control how many leads that you can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but also when as a beginner, right? Do you think it's smart to like start implementing all this stuff? And that's level three, so it's like you're already learning new stuff, right? Because you have to keep learning, um, but. I feel like I took me, took me forever to like implement those stuff. You get me like add the the software to my back end, and it, I I don't know if it was because lack of mentors or I don't know people teaching me that stuff, but it took me a while to realize that you know hey, you can do this in the back end and they have more products you know because I was always I was always like focused on one product and I was like okay that's all I'm focusing on, but I never understood like the email list side of it right because you can promote different things with it. I feel like that's something that I was it was missing from me as a complete well, beginner. Well, let me ask you this then. So when I say that, I'm thinking level three is probably six months to a year, mm -hmm. right? And, and that may be a little aggressive for your time frame and for the beginner time frame, but I, I think that's reasonable because I think by six months, if you have the time to put in and, and, and you should be able to be generating somewhat consistent income. You might not be... Yeah rolling in the dough, but you should be able, like Andre was, for example, but you should be able to generate some consistent income. So level three is maybe six months, two years. So my question, Andre, is before you get to that, what what should you, is there something I miss? Is there something I skipped over? Is there something that is important that I passed? Do you think there's anything they should do before they start thinking about that next step? 
um i think it just it comes down back to the traffic right because there's no reason why you should be worried about adding more products adding more things into your back end when you have nobody watching your <laughs> your funnel right nobody watching your videos um so it always like i say it always came back to traffic to me you know i wake up i didn't have enough followers i was like okay i need more followers so how do i get more followers more content more conversations and stuff like that yeah absolutely um you know it it that might be a time where level three also includes expanding to a new platform for mm -hmm. example yeah. Uh, maybe maybe it's like, okay, cool. Now I have the minimum viable system set up where it's running, it's generating revenue. Now it's a situation where, hey, let let's feed more traffic into it because it's you, it's already working, yeah. right? Right. Rather than implementing more stuff that might might break or 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 reduce conversion, we we know what's working. Let's feed more traffic into it. So that, exactly. Got exactly. It. Yeah. So in the beginning, like I said, you know, I wasn't worried about adding more income streams because I I feel like I couldn't handle it. Right, my mind wasn't going that way right now. My mind was going to make the plan A work, right? Which was the main product, right? So if somebody wasn't buying the main product, I wasn't gonna think about other products in the back end at yeah. that stage. At that yeah. stage, at the beginner stage, I was right. just worried yeah. about selling plan A. <laughs> right. So the the bottom line here is don't move to level three until level two is working. Is that is exactly, that fair to say? Exactly. Exactly. Don't try to change nothing if, if you are not even making a sale right now. Like, for example, right now, right? Don't try to sell a $497 product if you can sell a $7 product first. You right. get me? Like, <laughs> that, that's just how I see it. One step at a time, right? Yeah. Learn, learn to make some sales first. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess we get to a situation now where let's say everything's going along good. You know, you got your funnel set up. Everything's working good there. You're getting traffic. You expand it out to other platforms. Maybe you add some software at that point. Um, then I guess it's it, it's level four at the next stage. Yeah, I feel like level four is when you are doing this already for multiple months. You oh, get me? Definitely. So, so definitely. level four is where you have level one to three on lock, and you are in the. I'm not gonna say you're comfortable, but you already know what to do. Right. So then I think that becomes level four, which is just an aggregate of everything that you're doing on a daily basis. And then you see how how long you can take it, right? Or how far you can take it, right? You can maybe start thinking about how to scale that, right? But I feel like that should be level four, where everything already like fits into place, you're in a better, play, uh, better space, um, you know what you're doing, you know what to do, you have more confidence. And then maybe you start branching out and doing other stuff, right? That could be like the exit. Or maybe that's level four where you feel comfortable, but then level five is when you already want to be uncomfortable again and you want to try new things. Yeah, level four is is maybe level four. And we're just kind of making this up on the fly, but maybe level four is where you quit your job and go full time with this. Yeah, that that that's a good... And that's a big confidence boost right because even though i was ready i wasn't ready <laughs> you know <laughs> maybe level four is take a step back enjoy the new freedom take a few vacations see if you can do this without doing it daily mm -hmm. or even if it's and that's kind of where we get back to what we started with earlier andre where it's like well how long does this take does it take three hours a day does it take 15 minutes a day it depends Maybe level four is, hey, guess what? You really can do this with like 15 minutes a day. You know, I'll never forget when, when uh, I think it was, I think it was the first summer of, of COVID. So the summer of 2020, we're like, what can we do? We can't go anywhere. So we literally rented a, a trailer, hooked it up to my truck and drove to Colorado and, you know, all around and went down to Santa Fe and. I literally worked 10 minutes a day and, and the, the income was just rolling in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went on a cruise maybe two years ago or a year ago, actually I had no signal. Yeah. You get me? Like the little signal that I had, it was just to reply to a couple of people checking, making sure that everything looks good and that's it, you know? And I was still making really good money, you know, just by, you know, just trusting the process, I guess you can say. Yeah. All right, so level four, it's settled. It's just enjoy the shit out of it. Yeah, level four, 
you're at a point where you're comfortable doing what you're doing every single day. And then level five is when you get uncomfortable, when you want to try new things, when you want to maybe scale, because that happens to every entrepreneur where they're good, they're a good place, and then they want to try something new. But the thing, the unknown, is that there's an unknown. You don't know if that is going to work. You right. get me? So it's always like, you don't know if that's going to work. You don't know if that's going to be successful as well. Um, so you start getting a little uncomfortable. You start, uh, you know, getting those feelings back. You know, I got to make it, I got to make this work. But it's good, though. You have to not stay comfortable. You have yeah. to get out of your comfort zone always, always, always. So when we're talking about level five, let's be clear here. Resist the temptation to blow up what's working, right? Because if it's working, continue to do it. But how can you add to that? And some of the things you can do at level five, I think, are this is a great opportunity to create something pretty valuable that you can give away for free. Whether that's a training, whether that's as simple as a as a guide, as a manual. Um, I think you, there's a lot of benefit to ha be had here from saying, okay, cool, this is working, it's generating consistent income. Now, let's focus on authority, right? Rather than just going out and selling and creating some $37 ebook that teaches people how to do whatever, let's go ahead and establish our authority now. Create something amazing that you can give away to free because you're not in survival mode anymore at this point. You literally have time, you have experience. Go out there and, and give something away for free. And that's a good test to get you to the point where it's level 5B, where maybe you create something of your own to sell. Is Are we there yet? Yeah. Um, I don't think level 5, you're there yet. I, don't think I feel so like either. level 5, you're, get, you're getting your fee with. You get me? Uh, yeah. Maybe you're going to masterminds. Maybe you're going to different places, different events. You get me? Um, but I don't think you're ready to yet at level five but i honestly i don't feel like you're ever ever going to be ready <laughs> yeah <laughs> to, one other to... thing you can do that works really well and this is this is the good level five thing is when you really focus in on creating so what i like to do and this is might just be my personal experience but i love to create trainings that overcome objections. And this could maybe go hand in hand with another level five activity, which would scare a lot of people. Long form content on YouTube. What do you think? Yeah, that's definitely one of the scary ones, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not instant gratification. It's not like instant views, instant sales. It takes time, you know? We've been doing this podcast for what, more than a year now, and we've been posting consistently every single week, which Long form, long form uh, content is okay for us because we're used to these long interviews, right? So it's it's not as bad. But when you have to go on camera and teach something for ten minutes, and then edit it, and then making sure how you frame it, um, where to put the call to actions, and start thinking about every single aspect of a ten minute video. It's a lot. <laughs> it's not that simple anymore. It's not like, okay, you're going to put record seven second video and you're done. No, it takes a long time. A 10 second tutorial, sorry, a 10 minute tutorial can take maybe three hours to edit, you know? So I was going to it, say, it, yeah, it's, it's a gonna, lot it might more take work, three a lot more process. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Thankfully, by the time where I was thinking about long form content, I was already making money. So I had somebody do my editing for me. But not in the beginning, right? In the beginning, I was the one editing like eight hours, taking to edit a 10 minute video. You know, I had to learn those skills. But then I realized, do I want to do this or do I want to just pay somebody else so I can do more of those videos? You know, something like that. So you gotta, you have to prioritize and you have to sacrifice at some point in your business. You know, in the beginning, as a beginner, you sacrifice maybe time with your family because you had to learn something new, right? You sacrifice more time. But now, when you're already advanced, you can sacrifice other areas of your business, right? In order for you to get further along. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And, but, you know, like you said, you know, at this time, the game has changed. You have more time, you have money, you can hire an editor. Um, I, I think you made a valid point there when saying, yeah, start by editing your own videos because it'll, mm -hmm. it'll force you to become hypercritical of your framework. You know, and, and that's going to make the difference in the world because what's the benefit of doing long form like a podcast or like a YouTube? 
but certainly isn't quick results, but it's long-term growth. I think when we started this podcast and started putting it on YouTube, we're like, man, if we're, if it's doing anything by year three, that's a win. But we also know that as we get better, as we gain a following, as we get more loyal viewers, as the, you know, YouTube gives us more exposure and stuff like that, the, we know the potential is huge. But like I said, when you're in survival mode, working the nine to five, wondering how you're going to make money, don't, you don't, don't think three years ahead. Don't think four years ahead. Think, what can I do quickly? <laughs> but have patience, yeah. but what can I do now? Exactly, exactly. Well, so I guess that's the beginner mentality, right? The beginner, no mentality, the beginner uh, situation. When you first started, what do you do all day? So these are the areas where you should be like looking at, like, okay, well, I got to focus on these things first, one step at a time, you know, don't just go, I got to create a podcast, you know, like, don't do that in the beginning, don't do that. But now, as experts, I guess you can say, you know, as people that have been doing this for many years, what do we do all day now, Brian? <laughs> and it depends, Andre, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it really depends. But yeah, so now we've gotten to a situation where, you know, part of, I guess le this is level six, you know, you go and collect all your awards and you start networking and meeting people and, and maybe think of a partnership and so on and so forth. But at some point, you know, you may want to dip your toe into, I guess, creating your own product line. And I guess that would be level six and don't rush into this because it's, it's a whole nother ball game, but it, it is a good opportunity because at this point you're going to be probably what? A year and a half to two and a half years into your journey. Is that fair to say? Yeah. So maybe so, even three years. Maybe even three years. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I I agree. And so now what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a built-in audience who might be clamoring from something from you. You know what I mean? There may be requests. Hey, I want you to teach this your way. Because all the basic principles are the same. Um, you know, there's a hundred million affiliate marketing courses out there or whatever your niche is, whatever your area of expertise is at this point, there's plenty of courses out there, but people come to my course because they like the way that I teach. It makes sense to them. Now, does my way of teaching make sense to everybody? Not necessarily, but the people who buy my products like the way I teach. So that's where you're going to see people being like, Hey, when are you going to create something? I know, um, it looks like Josh, who was, uh, a Previous guest on, on this podcast, I saw he just launched a, an Instagram course, um, and I think it's his first real product, and it's doing well for him, but that's probably because his audience knew he was an authority in that area and wanted something from him. So now it's time to go out and create something. So so what do we do, Andre, if you want to create something? Yeah, so you know, I talked about getting my feet wet, and I talked about three years because that's what happened to me. Um, I didn't go on and create my own thing. I did get my free way with like coaching, coaching opportunities where I was charging people for my coaching and it was cool. You know, I made some money. It was all right. You know, I wasn't passionate about it uh, at that point, but I just, I just did it just to test it out, right? Test the waters. And then getting my feet wet in another way is when we started the podcast too, Brian. Because I had I haven't even created my own product yet before creating this podcast. So we did that. Uh, it went well. You know, we got a lot of great feedback from a lot of people, a lot of interest, and it's great. And that's why we're here today, right? But then after that, I learned I learned more skills where I was like, okay, I think it's time to create my own thing. I saw the opportunity. I saw a gap in the market and I took it and it's been doing great. So yeah, I created my program in Spanish and I'm helping the Spanish community. But I thought about it for so many months. Maybe it took me, I don't know, like a good six months of me thinking about creating my own product, especially in a different language, right? Different business, different everything, uh, different market, everything, right? Everything was completely from zero. Um, and it was tough. You know, I was thinking about it for a while and then... When I decided, okay, I'm going to do it, now is the creating side of it, right? So then I had to start creating all the trainings. Um, it took me maybe like four months to create everything. I mean, I was done with one thing and I was like, yes, I'm done. And then the next day I would think about something else. 
But then something else would pop up and everything else, it was always like something new, something new, something new. And it was because I didn't know. I never done this before. So I was learning day by day, you know. So that's that's what I did in order for me to start thinking about, okay, maybe it's time to create my own my own thing. But like I said, I tested my I tested the waters first, you know, started slow, coaching and then the podcast and then actually had my own program with coaching inside of it. Yeah, coaching is a great way to start because creating a course or a program or, or or whatever takes all this time up front. Where coaching, you can just send an email to your list or create a post or whatever and say, hey, I'm willing to take on a few people and you make money right away. But the other side of that too is then you can go through and you can actually teach people and you can see like what works for other people, what resonates with them. Not that you don't know the frameworks, but it's it's almost a situation where you think you're going to teach one thing, but they get something completely different out of it that was probably twice as valuable as what they thought they were going to get. And when you do that first, not only do you just make money right away and jump right into it, but you start to learn kind of your teaching style and how you can really help people the most in a unique way. But you said it perfectly. When it's time to create your own coaching program or beyond that to create your own course, what do you look for? Will you look for a gap in the market? Right. And you saw one with the Spanish market and affiliate marketing. When you find a gap in the market, that's the course you create. Now, what do you want to teach? Because when my first course was kind of what I wanted to teach Mm -hmm. and it made some money, but it didn't do very well. I mean, I sold some, but you know, it it didn't scale. Um, It was a good course, but it just didn't, didn't sell because it wasn't addressing a gap in the market. It wasn't something that people wanted to learn. So yeah, identify the gap in the market. And when you see it and it's calling to you and you can't turn it off and you can't ignore it and it's getting you excited, that's when it's like, okay, cool. Here's the course or whatever that I'm going to create. Mm -hmm. And then you also have your own program too, right? So you have your own program. I have my own program. We have this podcast together because you, you mentioned something about maybe partnering up with somebody else, right? That's getting to the point where it's, um, it's common now. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of affiliates like partnering up together. Um, maybe they have their own coaching program together. Maybe they go in full into like a course or a program. Uh, maybe they're selling guides on the side together. You get me? So I seen that happening a lot. And then, you know, we created a podcast together. But before us, I didn't see no, that many people like partnering up in, in no, this way, right? Not in this space. No, not in the, the affiliate marketing space is usually or typically or historically a bunch of lone wolves. Yeah, I don't want to hire any employees. I don't. Want, I just want to go out there and make money and do my own thing. So I think that's why you didn't see it in the affiliate marketing space. Uh, but it just it makes a lot of sense. You get half the work and twice the audience. You know what I mean? So that, that's a win win right there. It's really as simple as that. Um, yeah, and and it and it's and it's it's been cool. But you know, be be ready to work once it's time. To create the create the product because you don't you're not working 15 da- you know minutes a day anymore. It, it takes a lot of effort. And I was an affiliate marketer for 10 years before I launched my first affiliate marketing course, but it was because I saw a gap in the market. And it was just mm-hmm. one of those things where I didn't want to do it. I was like, I'm an affiliate marketer. I don't know, I don't want to be the affiliate marketer who's the affiliate coach. But I saw a gap in the market and it was calling to me and I couldn't I couldn't turn it off. So I was like, all right, let's go out and do this thing. But that was 10 years. So you yeah. don't have to you don't have to rush it, but yeah, that's definitely the the next the next phase, and then of course the podcast, which uh, exactly you know was was discussed and agreed upon at uh, poolside smoking a cigar at, at an event ceremony or a, a convention. So yeah, that, I guess that's part of you know phase five or whatever. But yeah, it's really cool when you when you when you think about it. What did we just do? We just outlined here the three and a half year plan for your business. And it took us less than an hour. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it like that, hopefully I kind of, I think that's kind of my hope for this episode is someone looks at that and says, okay, two things. I'm going to start now. I'm going to work hard and put the time in, but I'm also going to be patient and B start to understand, wow, my life could be completely different three, three and a half years from now. If I just decide to go for it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we're perfect examples, right? We came from the food industry and we were able to get it done in our different ways, right? Because we didn't get it here the same way. We had different experiences, 
different time frame too, but we're here, you know, we're here, we're partnered together on this podcast. We have great programs, you know, on the side. So it is literally, you know, the, the trajectory that you can literally take if you're a beginner all the way to where we are now. And now, of course, our day today is not 15 minutes anymore. You get me? Once you start creating your program, you know, you start organizing your time a little more different, right? Especially when you have different projects. Like we know this podcast, we meet once a week and that's good, you know, but we're able to have that time to start this cool stuff um, in order for us to keep growing. Um, managing your program, managing your course, that takes a lot of time. Managing the community it takes a lot of time. Um, we put ourselves in this situation though. Mm -hmm. You get me? It's not like, okay, yeah, we're affiliate marketers. We could easily say affiliate marketers and work two hours a day for the rest of our lives. But we put ourselves in a position where, no, we want to actually help more people, right? So now we got to spend a little more time in order for the program to work, the back office, the customer service, and all, all the things that you don't have to worry about as an affiliate marketer. Yeah. And you know, there's probably someone listening to this right now who's like, well, why wouldn't you just work two hours a day for the rest of your life and make 50, 60, $70,000 a month? And it's, it's one of those things that I equate to when I used to live in San Diego, California. We lived in San Diego, California, arguably the best weather probably in the world. We lived fairly close to the beach. Now this was before the side hustle thing took off. So we didn't live on the beach by any means, but we lived fairly close to the beach. We lived right across the street from farmers markets and all the stuff that you want. There, you know, palm trees everywhere. Absolutely beautiful, you know. And what did we get sick of? It being sunny every damn day. You know what I mean? So it's kind of one of those things where it's like experiences are good, but eventually, you know, you get a little bored. You know, you want to try something new. And that's when that's when we both decided to go out there and create our own thing. It was it was a challenge. And it's not a three week challenge. It's a sometimes a multi year challenge. And it's one of those things where you're either green and growing or ripe and dying, which is a, a phrase I love because it's just so applicable to all of life. This actually propels you forward as a human. When you go out there and try to give back, try to help other people, try to create something amazing, and it keeps you going. It's part of the evolution of not just your business, but the evolution of your life, I think. Yeah, it fuels you. It's like the fuel that you need. You know, you being uncomfortable, you trying something new, you not knowing, you going to the unknown gives you that fuel to keep going and keep moving forward. And that's why when you're getting started and you saw a seven second TikTok that told you you could make $800,000 a month with affiliate marketing and you decided to go for it, understand that it's going to be frustrating at times, but learn to embrace that frustration and then the eventual conquering of that problem. Because here we are, I'm 12 years into it, you're multiple years into it, and we are, we are actively taking on these frustrations. We didn't have to. It wasn't out of necessity. We weren't in a back against the wall situation. We mm -hmm. actively searched. We came from a place of comfort and quite frankly, abundance and said, what can I do today to make my life more difficult? So if we're, if, if we're not looking for an award or a pat on the back here, we're trying to show you that this is going to happen. You are going to get to the point where you're not coming from scarcity. You're coming from abundance and you're like, what can I do to make my life more difficult? So why not embrace it in the beginning? Because you're going to go through it again and again and again. And I guarantee Andre sometime five, 10, 15 years down the road, God willing, I'm going to look at my life and I will have, you know, built the program to the, to the point where I wanted it and, and, and see a end to that season of my life. And I'm probably going to go try to do something bigger and more frustrating and more risky. And I'm going to take that upon myself, probably from a situation where multiple million dollars worth of net worth, not just income made, but net worth. And I'm going to go, what can I do today to make myself, my life more difficult? Yeah. So it's, just, it's part of the process.
it's just gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. Don't stay comfortable. You're gonna change. You're gonna wanna try something new. You know, and like I said, you know, that's gonna get you. It gives us the excitement that we had when we first started. The unknown. You get me? Okay, what is this gonna what is this? Is this gonna work? And it just keeps me going, honestly. You know, the competition keeps me going, the motivation keeps me going, and then just getting out of my comfort zone. And then this podcast is the perfect example for that. Um, you said something about abundance, you know, we had so much to give and we are giving it for free to everybody listening to this podcast. So this is great. I think it's a good way to finish um, this episode. What, what do you think? I think it was fantastic. And, and just like this podcast is just like everything else you do. In the beginning, when we decided to take this upon ourselves, it took a long time. And, and we started editing our own episodes. And now it just gets easier. Now it's to the point where it's literally an hour and 20 minutes a week. 60 minutes to the to record, 20 minutes to upload, and that's it. So everything gets easier. But I think that's yep. a fantastic way to end this episode. I appreciate everybody who tuned into this one today. I think it was a good one. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, we'll see you again next week on another episode of the Evolve Marketing Podcast.